G'day viewers, my name is Graham Stevenson and I'd like to invite you to come on a journey of creativity and learning and adventure through the series Colour in Your Life. There's an artist in every family throughout the world and lots of times there's an artist deep down inside all of us as well. So grab your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, uncles and mums and dads and come and see how some of the best artists do what they do. Okay guys, welcome back to Colour in Your Life. Well, we are in Canberra today, Australia's capital territory, and we are with a master watercolour artist, Mr. Chan DeSanike. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Graham. Fantastic to have you here. Chan, I actually saw Chan's work oh, a couple of years ago, and actually I, he had won uh, a major prize with a picture of some jumbo jets at the airport, and I looked at that and I thought, that's really cool. I'd love to have that man on the show. And I had heard a lot about him over the coming years as far as he's won multiple awards, he travels over, overseas and teaches a great deal. His workshops are always booked out. He's an amazing, amazing man. Welcome to the show. It's, it's fantastic to be here. Um, you originally got started because of figurative painting. Yeah, actually. So I, I basically came to watercolour from a life drawing background. Uh -huh. So, and uh, drawing was something that I did very passionately from a very early age. Sure. And eventually, you know, uh, got introduced to watercolour. Yeah. And uh, here I am. And you've, you've spent some time with some of the great masters as well over the years. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. I think we're blessed in Australia with these masters, you know, Joseph to, to, to Herman, to yeah. Alvaro. Yeah. And it's hard not to get influenced by these guys. So, yeah, they've been my inspiration, actually. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Well, they've, you know, in any sense, I think that you are an equal par under any circumstances with those guys. Your work <laughs> is you. quite extraordinary. But Chan really is a fantastic teacher. I mean, his workshops are always booked out, but he's one of those men that's really studied his craft extremely well, and you're gonna get a really, really fantastic education today as far as watercolors is concerned. But I'm gonna step out of shot as normal, and then uh, we're gonna watch what Chan does as far as his methodology is concerned, and then we're gonna move on to do an actual piece itself. So uh, I'm gonna get out of here, and you're gonna watch a master do what he does. He's very, very good. Alright Chan, well you've got four um, different areas of expertise you're going to show us. Uh, how do we start? Yeah, so Graham, I thought before we start um, into, um, before we actually start the piece, I might go through some uh, technical side of, of how watercolour behaves. You see, watercolour is different to other mediums, the dry mediums like oils and acrylics, um, where you are painting on a static surface. Whereas the, the watercolour paper, when it's damp, it's actually a dynamic surface. It keeps moving and, and it, the, the, the mark you place is not the mark you end up with. So what I will do is um, wet the paper first. And what type of watercolour paper you use? Uh, this is Arches. Yeah. Um, I, the two types that I use are Arches and Saunders. Okay. This is what, 240 or? Uh, 300 GSM. 300, okay. Rough to medium. Yep. yep. Okay, so this paper is thoroughly wet. It's 100% it's wet and, and you can see the sheen of the paper still shining through. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to get some... So which colour are you This using? is Ultra, Ultramarine yeah. Blue. It's got a really good tonal depth to, to show this sort of effect. So get a sort of a milky consistency. And I'm going to place a mark here. I'm going to maybe draw some shape here. Yeah. And as you see, it's, it's, it's expanding beyond its edge. You can't control the edge. The top part is, is becoming a bit more dry, so it's actually becoming a bit more controlled, but it, the bottom part is dragging the paint and the pigment. So this is an uncontrolled soft edge. Um, so if I place the same mark on this part, which mm. is slightly drier, you begin to get a controlled soft edge. So this is, I've lost the shape itself. The, 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 the shape expands beyond its edges, but actually the, the shape is retained, but the edges are softer. Yeah? Now this is on wet paper. So I call this effect number one, and this is effect number two. So on the dry paper, which is quite simple, you fully load the brush, 
and make this mark you get a hard edge the edges are crisp razor sharp edges okay so I like to call this effect number three and lastly what I'm going to do is get a lot of pigment but reduce the, the water quantity and I'm going to make the same mark and as you can tell it actually breaks so you get this broken edge as opposed to a hard edge still on dry paper and I like to call this effect number four so you've got an uncontrolled soft edge controlled soft edge hard edge and a broken edge Fantastic, and it's, it's, it's got a lot to do with timing, but particularly with that broken edge. Um, you, the last thing you want to do with watercolour is to fill the thing in, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So if you have too much paint, you'll actually get this edge. Yeah. So you've got to reduce it so the water's actually not dripping out of the brush. Um, so you get this lovely speckled effect um, where the texture of the paper, you just got, it's got a hit and miss sort of effect. Mm -hmm. And that can be used creatively on the right place uh, at the right time. Yeah. Well, we're going to move on and do one of your beautiful watercolours. It's always magical as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I'm, I can paint with watercolours, but nowhere near like you guys do. But to simply watch these pictures appear with the least amount of effort, I mean, less is always more in watercolour. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's, that's the critical message is that uh, if, you, if, you, if you let watercolour paint itself, it paints it better than you. So, so, you know, by leaving it and let the magic sort of happen on the paper is, is what I'm about. So uh, let's see how we go. Okay, so we've got the, the paper taped up. Now it's actually getting into the subject itself. And as you can tell, um, this is a subject that I painted before. So I'm going to start the drawing process. Um, when we look it into the drawing, we want to sort of rearrange the shapes in, in an interesting sort of way. And uh, one of the first things is to is isolate the horizon. So in this case, I'm just going to make a low horizon. Uh, basically, about there. Not halfway, but just, just below halfway. Somewhere there. And from this side, I'll also make a few few lines. So we, we've got the leading shape. So we've got the sky, the background area, basically the foreground and this sort of road surface, mm -hmm. which is going to be the three biggest shapes in the painting. Over these years, I mean, you've obviously made a lot of trial and error in doing what you're doing, just regardless of um, the influences that you've had. And that's really the key to the watercolour isn't it? you just got to keep trying absolutely yeah. um, I think you know it's one of those uh, things uh, mediums where you actually just got to persevere with it it takes years of learning and uh, you know practice 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 is the key um, you're bound to make a lot of mistakes but but they are part of learning and uh, and you know you with every painting you you learn something new mm -hmm. uh, is, is what I feel absolutely you've got a picture here in your collection and there's some absolutely amazing paintings that Chan has done but it's called Farmhouse in New South Wales but the perspective in this particular picture not just the objects the geometric objects but the actual perspective of the colour is quite amazing. One of the key elements of drawing is understanding perspective and proportion so it doesn't matter whether it's a natural scene or a, or a, or a streetscape to a, to a landscape you still have to have things in the right order. And there's another one of Echuca, but it's an old town, uh, they have paddle steamers down there. But once again, looking at the perspective of not just the buildings, but the colour perspective as well. Yes, yes. Echuca is one of those uh, magical towns, and I, I, I actually did a uh, tour, a painting tour with Travel Right, historic towns of southern Australia, and we stayed in Echuca, and uh, it was just a magical place to paint, you know, beaming with a lot of subjects, uh, paddle steamers to streetscapes. Uh, you can just sit there and do a painting 360 degrees, so that's, it's an amazing place. Yeah, and Travel Ride actually does some fantastic trips away with talented artists like yourself. I mean, they only get the best people. I'm actually involved with another tour that's coming up to Tuscany, Italy, yeah. um, which will happen in September this year. 
Um, yeah, it's a great way to explore you know, plein air painting with a group of artists and, and uh, yeah, it's really looking forward to that actually. Yeah, a lot of fun and with a gentleman of your particular skills, it should be fantastic. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be lovely. Okay, so the drawing's actually pretty much done and I've got the essential elements yeah, to, to do the painting. But what I thought is what's lacking in this painting uh, photograph is a bit of life. And what I'll do is I'll actually add a car that's actually driving into the painting to lead the eye into the painting. It's nothing um, big, it's something slightly small. Um, I'll just put a back of a car here and just a visual element. Any particular model? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> the one with four wheels. Four wheels, that's Little it. Bit, yeah. That's it. Yeah, so I use a wide variety of brands, uh, ranging from Daniel Smith to Schmincke to Art Spectrum, but generally most of the paints are Winsor & Newton. Mm -hmm. I, I find that the, the pigmentation is, is much finer and it works really well uh, with that sort of pigment. So. So just a dull blue, um, yeah. it's not very overpowering, but very watery um, at this stage. And so I'll use this bead and start this from the top. And your, your brushes as well, I mean. Uh... Yeah, I use a lot of, uh, lot of brushes, but I, I've been becoming fond of these uh, calligraphy, Chinese calligraphy brushes. Yes. And uh, they actually do a, a really good job, so. Um, so I'm using them to good effect. <laughs> Gravity is actually pulling the pigment down and you get a sort of a wet area here and you just use that to your advantage and, and bring it down. Um, so as you come down, I'm actually going to go a bit thicker with mm -hmm. pigment and use something like a bit of lilac. It's, it's a bit opaque and it gives you that sort of distant mountain feel. Yes. Um, so break down, even as at this stage, if I get a little bit of um, whites that are left behind, I'll leave them to be the snow caps in the mountains. But you've got to make sure they're not too big, yeah? Yeah. So I'm increasing more pigment as I go along. Yeah, and as I can see that you're watching you mix, there's less and less water. More less and more water. Pigment. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. It's another piece that you've got here that's not, um, not in the snow by any means, but it's called Kubia. Creek. You can just see that softness that you've actually put into that back, that very wet effect in the hills. Yes. And then as you get close, you can see the pigment build and the perspective of the colour as well. Absolutely. Beautiful piece. Yeah, so I think um, Australian landscape, you know, you get these lovely panoramic landscapes around and, and uh, it's imperative that you create that sort of distant effect. Yeah. So the colours that I'm using are ultramarine blue and, and burnt sienna. Mm -hmm and that makes a lovely dark. Probably the other thing to sort of say is that uh, this, this uh, painting is one of those paintings that uh, it's not gonna look right until you actually get all the elements in. Yeah. It's like a jigsaw puzzle you sort of fill in from the side, but until everything's filled in, it just looks out of place. Yeah, so Jan, I can remember when I first saw your work, you'd actually won a, a prize with a picture of um, some jumbo jets at the airport. But there's a really interesting story behind that particular painting. It's, can you illuminate us on that? I was in Melbourne actually. I saw this potential on the tarmac, the, the light reflections and, and the contest planes uh, reflecting onto the wet tarmac. Yeah. But I did a little sketch, but I didn't have enough materials to uh, pull the painting together. So later on, I thought I'll find a wet day in Sydney. I went myself to Kingsmith Smith with a <laughs> little stepladder yeah. and, a, and my camera and I peep over one of the security fences to take these photographs and uh, I was just waiting for a plane to come in and I just saw this flash of light behind me and there were a line of police cars. <laughs> <laughs> trying to <laughs> trying to tell me that that's uh, that's not legal. So yeah, it was interesting. I had to do a lot of explaining. Yes, I bet. <laughs> yeah, but uh, after explaining it, it was, t turned out to be okay. And it's uh, you went on to to win a major prize with it as yes, well, it which did, is fantastic. Actually. Yeah, it did. Yes, great story. 
I'm going to start with a bit of raw sienna. It's going to be an underwash basically, a bit of raw sienna and burnt sienna maybe. Yeah. Very watery. And this is going to go all the way. And don't even worry about the car. But be careful to leave a bit of that white on the side of the road. You yeah. don't want to sort of eliminate too much of the white paper. And if you happen to get a bit of white paper, that's not a bad thing. Yeah, so you've got the snow poking through the road. Yeah, yeah. so this is That's just right. the start of it. Yep. And the next stage is to actually get the, the darks. So I'll start again. My darks are always going to be burnt sienna and ultra. And I'll start with this. And if you let watercolor paint itself, it looks way better. Yes. I mean, this technique really has to be done fairly consistently because you really can't go back and get the effect that you want if it's dry. It's got to, it's got to be done wet. Absolutely, while yeah. the paper's wet, I'm just yeah. trying to get this, this in in one go. And then all those little magic things happen when you let the pigment do what it needs to Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Yeah, it's great. And these are the things that you teach in your workshops as well. Absolutely, yeah. you know, I think it's important to go through the actual technical side, the steps. Now you were saying that you actually write articles for some of the magazines? Yes, I'm uh, Australian Artist uh, magazine. I've actually got a few articles to come mm -hmm. this June and July. Yeah, I enjoy that um, sort of communication, I guess, with my students with, through magazines. So do you get much of a chance, I mean, obviously being a father of young children and um, lovely wife, um, do you get much of a chance to get out and, and plain air yourself? I try to as, as much as I can, yeah. um, but obviously time constraints and as you said family uh, yeah. does restrict. But I do plein air workshops quite a lot, yeah. um, which gets me out there. So, yeah. I mean if people want to get in touch, I mean I'll just say it right now, it's uh, chanbisson.com slash forward workshops. Correct, correct. Um, All my upcoming workshops are um, on there, so yeah. anybody wants to have a look, yeah. And it's a really, really pretty area around here too. Oh, some great scenery, I mean the little creek beds and the reflections in the water, um, there's some of the great country around here. I think that's one of the reasons that I, I love living in Canberra because yeah. you know 20 minutes drive you're into the country yeah. and the lovely landscape yep. and uh, yeah absolutely. So the shadows anchors them onto the snow itself so mm -hmm. it's better to do them while the, the, the trunks are actually wet Yeah. so by touching them it just gives you an impression of of a shadow under and you don't need to be very precise. So this tree trunk here, the main trunk, I, I really want to leave some whites where there's a bit of the snow being caught up on the edges mm -hmm. kind of thing. So what you do is you leave some of the white paper yeah. and just paint the trunk and uh, what you left behind becomes the actual snow. Yeah. If you don't, um, if you leave it and do it quickly, it's it works out. If you try to paint by little by little, it'll lose that feel. So. I'll be very liberal with this. There you go. And it's sort of something that you've really got to plan. You do. You've got to be aware of it. You do. And I slightly bend the tree into the painting. Mm. I don't want it to go out of the painting as well. It draws it all into the middle. Yeah. yeah. So then there's just minor adjustments to that. Because some of your streetscapes are just superb. You've got a uh, rainy day in Istanbul. Oh, yeah. Turkey, and you've yep. got Hagia Sophia in the background there. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and then another one called Rainy Day in Goulburn, and that looks like a really rainy day in Goulburn. It was actually. <laughs> it, was, uh, it bucketed down. Yeah. <laughs> I actually did a workshop with the Goulburn Art Society, yeah. and we went to lunch, and it was just, I couldn't see 10 metres away. Is that right? And I just loved that scene because it, it simplified the, um, the scene into so many simple shapes yeah. which which you wouldn't do with otherwise too much detail and I love that sort of atmospheric sort of pieces. And a couple more pieces I'd like to mention as well because I really love your street scenes is Flinders Square for a start which is an absolutely fantastic piece that is just beautiful it reminds me a little bit of the time that we did the three amigos funny enough you can almost see them walking down the street and one more which was Molesworth Street in Lismore. Lismore. So, but, and you love all those old iconic buildings. Yeah, I all absolutely the love it. All the Art Nouveau, turn of the century stuff. <laughs> absolutely love yeah. it. And I think all the old sort of 
country towns have that character, that feel yes. that a lot of the sort of new suburbs are losing and uh, I'm, I'm old fashioned when it comes to that. And also um, your nudes as well, I mean, which is pretty, pretty well where you started from. Pretty much, uh, That yeah. was a big influence on you becoming a, a watercolour artist and establishing where you are now. Pretty much. And, uh, you know, one of the special things that, that you were pointing at in some of these nudes as well is that you didn't actually draw a lot of these out when you first started doing your studies. You just basically took the tone of the paint and literally created the picture by brush. Correct. No pencil lines at all. That's right. You basically draw with the brush. Yeah. And that way you get, can get to the shape very quickly yeah. and, and to the form as well. So, um, so it's, 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 it's a very easy way of, to paint. But it's challenging because you, you can get things wrong. So, uh, so, but it forces you to work quickly. And that sort of immediacy will feed into, into the works. So I'm going to get this little car in, which just leads you into the painting. Yeah. Um, it's just a mere suggestion. You don't want to do too much work on it, um, but just suggest it, so. Yeah, sometimes when you look at them, it looks like an Audi, sometimes a Volvo. Something like that. <laughs> okay, I think I'm, I'm, I'm finished and it, I'm actually happy with this piece. It's uh, worked out pretty well. Um, and uh, it always do if you just apply the right techniques and plan your way through the painting and the end result speaks for itself. Um, but the best thing is when you actually remove the tape. So let's, uh, let's remove the tape and see how it looks. This is a very exciting part of uh, the piece, especially on a snow scene, when you yeah. get these white clean borders, uh, it gives you that lovely feel. Of the revealed edge. Look at that, just pushing there it straight are. back, doesn't it? Fantastic, Tim, that looks absolutely amazing. Really, really well done and fantastic information. Thank you, Brad. Okay, another great day with a fantastic artist in Canberra, master watercolour artist, Chan. Thank, Thank you, you so much for having us. It was fantastic. As you can see, what an amazing result. So, uh, as I said, Chan does a lot of workshops here and overseas. Uh, it'd be great to travel. You're going to Italy at some stage, aren't you, as well? Yeah. A lot of other countries opening up also. But if somebody wants to come and do one of your workshops, Fantastic for you. What's your website number? It's chandisson.com. Okay, come in and see Chan and uh, go in and see some of his work. He's got some great stuff for sale as well. And you can always pop in and see us at colorinyourlife.com.au and come and see us in Facebook and YouTube and Pinterest and Instagram and just about everything that we're on. And uh, yeah, we had a fantastic day. Thank you so much for having us. Uh, we've got a few more artists that we need to do in Canberra. We're looking forward to it. Great place to be, great town, great people. But remember, as I always say, until we meet again, remember, make sure you put some colour in your life. See you guys. Bye now. See ya. <laughs>